Slip streaming is a dynamic phenomenon that occurs when a car drives at high speed and pushes air out of its way. The car following closely benefits from reduced air resistance and drag, allowing it to achieve higher top speed. This technique is widely used in motorsport including NASCAR and Formula 1. In Formula 1, slip streaming is a powerful tool for overtaking. On straights, drivers position themselves directly behind the car in front to reduce drag, gaining extra speed before making a move. The leading driver has limited options to counter this. They can attempt to break the toe by moving across the track, but strict regulations only allow them to change direction once and must do so early to avoid dangerous driving. Failing to follow these rules can result in penalties. But what about karting? Does slipstream also work here? Today we are going to find this out. I have prepared a few simulations of two cars driving close together to analyze the power of slipstream. So let's take a look at the results. From the front, the airflow looks similar to normal conditions, but the real magic happens at the back. The leading cart encounters a significant amount of incoming air, which reduces the airflow interactions for the second cart, resulting in less drag. Looking at the pressure, we can clearly see that the second cart has a significantly smaller high pressure areas. There is almost no high pressure buildup in front panel, and the pressure in the driver's area is reduced. This means the second cart benefits greatly from reduced drag. This requires less effort to maintain speed, allowing the driver more opportunities for overtaking. It might seem like only the second cart gains an advantage, but the first cart isn't left out entirely. The wake behind the first cart is reduced, meaning a smaller vacuum effect which pulls it backward. Additionally, if the gap between the carts is slightly larger, the high pressure zone in front of the second cart can actually push the first cart forward without a physical contact. These two effects help both carts maintain speed, which is why NASCAR drivers use slipstreaming, also known as drafting, to work together, reduce drag and increase speed. Drivers often form drafting partnerships to maximize speed, allowing them to pull away from competitors or set up strategic overtakes. I have even created a special video based on NASCAR drafting to analyze this fascinating technique in action. According to my simulation results, the first card has a drag coefficient of 0.5, a lift coefficient of minus 0.30. The second card has a much lower drag coefficient of 0.24, with a positive lift of 0.02. From the numbers, we can clearly see that slipstreaming has a significant impact. Additionally, reduced downforce and dirty air left by first cart make the second cart less stable. This lack of aerodynamic grip can cause understeer or even oversteer, making it difficult to stay extremely close to another cart. A prime example of the dangers of dirty air was the crash between George Russell and Fernando Alonso at 2024 Australian Grand Prix. Despite Alonso decelerating early, the turbulent air left behind his car contributed to Russell's crash, showing how dirty air can reduce car's control. Additionally, dirty air isn't just bad for handling, it also affects cooling. In clean air, a car's radiator and engine receive a fresh air, helping to regulate temperatures. However, in dirty air, the turbulent airflow reduces cooling efficiency, causing engines to overheat more quickly. This is especially problematic in hot weather conditions, where managing engine temperature is crucial for performance and reliability. Right, so dirty air has both advantages and disadvantages. It helps with speed in straight line, but can make worsening cooling and handling unpredictable. From previous tests, we know that ducking down reduces drag significantly, but does it work the same way in slipstreaming? The answer is yes. By analyzing the airflow, we see that all the benefits of ducking down, such as smaller wake inside the cart, reduced air detachments also apply here. Additionally, the high pressure area above the second driver's helmet is reduced, and interestingly, the wake behind the second cart becomes even smaller, compared to when drivers are sitting upright. Simulation results show that the second driver's drag coefficient dropped to 0.2, but the lift coefficient increases even more, to 0.05. This happens because the driver's head is lower, 
causing air to interact with a smaller surface area, reducing drag but slightly increasing lift. So far, we have tested slipstreaming at very small gap. But what if the cars are fuller, for example, at 10 meters distance? Does the effect still work? The airflow behind the first cart still has lower velocity, meaning slipstreaming remains effective. However, the impact is reduced. Some of the air displaced by the first cart returns to its path and interacts with the second cart, creating high pressure zones on the bumper and front panel. This additional airflow disrupts the second cart's dynamic advantage, slightly increasing drag and reducing the overall slipstream effect. As a result, while the second cart still benefits, the effect is not as strong as when the carts are closer together. In terms of numbers, drag coefficient increases to 0.33, lift coefficient becomes negative, minus 0.08, meaning slightly more downforce than before. And what happens if both drivers dug down at 10 meters? The impact of slipstreaming doesn't disappear, but we see some changes. The high pressure zone in front of the second cart's bumper is slightly reduced. The wake behind the second cart is smaller. Other aspects remain similar. Here, numbers look quite similar to previous tests. Drag coefficient of 0.31, lift coefficient of minus 0.04. This confirms that ducking down while slipstreaming is still beneficial in terms of reducing drag, even at a greater distance. Here are results from all simulations. Right, but what can I do if I'm in front? How I can defend against slipstreaming? Well, if you are the driver in front and someone is trying to use slipstream to catch you, you can try to break the toe by moving off the racing line. However, making sudden moves is dangerous and can lead to penalties or even crashes. That is why in Formula 1, drivers are only allowed to do one defensive move per straight, and it must be done early. So overall, we can say that slipstreaming provides a significant advantage, particularly for the second card. By increasing speed, ducking down further enhances these benefits by minimizing drag. However, slipstreaming also comes with drawbacks as dirty air reduces cooling efficiency and downforce, making the cars less stable, especially in corners. This instability can lead to understeer or oversteer, making it harder to maintain control. Slipstreaming is a crucial element in motorsport, and as we have seen, it plays a role in karting as well. Mastering its effects can give you an edge on the track, so next time you hit the track, use slipstreaming to your advantage.